Spoiled. She, Kelly keeps trying to tell me she's not. Yeah. How many witnesses? Used to call it arm collar. Yeah. <laughs> we got witnesses now. My kids had it. <laughs> hey, man, let's turn to 1 John. Chapter number 1. 1 John chapter number 1. I told preacher if we can get Bo to understand that now, he'll be set. Amen. If he can understand those words now as a three-year-old, he will be set for the rest of his life. Amen. If he can understand that all he's got to do is trust him and lean on him, he'll be good to go. Amen. Mm -hmm. First John, we preached Sunday night, I guess it was, out of First John chapter 1. I'm just going to finish the chapter. Amen. I've been going verse by verse. Yeah. And if the Lord allows me, maybe I'll keep going through the book of John here. Amen. First John chapter number 1. Verse number 5, the Bible says, This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and the word is not in us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. Tonight, I thank you and I praise you for the opportunity and privilege that we have to be in your house tonight. Pray, God, that you'd help us speak to our hearts. Lord, I pray, God, you'd supply our needs according to your word, according to your will. And, Lord, I pray, God, that you'd forgive me of my sins, Lord, my faults, my failures. Lord, the many areas of my life, Lord, that I fail you and let you down daily, I pray, God, you'd forgive me. And, Lord, I pray, God, that you would empty me out of myself. And, Lord, I pray, God, you'd use me tonight. I pray, God, for your people, Lord. I thank you for those that are faithful to our church, Lord, that are here on a Wednesday night when many others are just sitting at home. Uh, Lord, chose not to be here, but thank you for those that chose to come. Lord, they decided that they were just going to be faithful to your house. I pray, God, you'd bless them for it. Lord, we love you tonight. We thank you and we praise you for all that you've done, all that you're going to do, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Quickly, before I get started, I do want to bring up uh, Saturday. I want to remind you that we're going to be meeting here about 11. Uh, 11.30, we'll be pulling out about 12 o'clock, okay? Uh, if we can get going before then, that'd be great, all right? So we're going to shoot for, uh, I got, I put on the flyer that we're going to meet here at 11. Amen, but turkey season opens up Saturday, so I might be a few minutes late, amen. <laughs> amen. I wasn't thinking when I planned it, Brother Joe, I wasn't, <clears throat> I didn't think about the, you know, amen. My wife's giving me them looks, Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Now we're going to, we'll, we'll still have plenty of time. Uh, the choir doesn't start till 3.30. It's about a two-hour drive, but I want us to be able to stop and maybe get some lunch before we get there and just take our time and not try to be in a hurry, okay? We're going to be leaving here, like I say, around 11.30, 12 o'clock. If we can, we need to be pulling out at that time, okay? We'll say 11. All right, 11.30. We're going to be pulling out. Uh the reason I want to give us a minute is because we're going to get those consent forms signed. Okay, so if you're bringing a, 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 someone that's under the age of 18, all right, I want you to be prepared to sign consent form. All it is is just you're just saying that you give permission for us to take your child on a trip, and uh, if something happens to them, we'll be able to get them some help and things like that, okay? Uh, it's nothing. You're not signing your kids over. Although some of you, I know some of you would like to, we cannot keep your kids, all right? Amen. It's all right to smile, folks. Amen. I know it's been a long day. Amen. Y'all, I promise y'all didn't see what I saw today. Amen. Yeah, um, Brother Joe may have, but <laughs> he did. But amen. So did I. Amen. Hallelujah. We was doing some pest control. I was doing, uh, we was going through, through this apartment complex, and uh, I found two people today, Brother Joe, that needed assistance uh, from... <laughs> One of them, one of them is, was in need of a corner, and one of them was shortly in need of a corner. Amen. 
I'm not kidding. I'm talking about face down in the floor, gone. Amen. So, huh? That's some strong pesticides. Amen. Amen. <laughs> no, we were, we were just doing some inspections and uh, had the master key. It's happened to me several times doing doing pest control. Just have the key walk in. And somebody just they just stepped out in the glory. Amen. Amen. I hope that's yeah, I hope that's where hope they had it settled. Amen. All right, let's look at everybody was you know everybody's like Jesse, how are you so calm? You know. I'm like, well, if you've seen some of the stuff I've seen at that prison, man, you, it, it's take a lot to shake you, amen. Yeah. And they're like, you, you just, you just so calm. I'm like, well, I, I just hope they went to heaven. You know, that's about all we can do. You know, the the maintenance guy comes running in, and he's, you know, he's freaking out. He takes off running. I'm like, oh, I said, slow down, Bobby. I said, hey, they ain't going nowhere. It's over with. <laughs> so. uh I was like, it, you know, <laughs> my wife, she's worried about my sense of humor. Y'all pray. <laughs> Amen. I'm just trying to get y'all to lighten up a little bit, all right? <laughs> Amen. That's the way to do it, ain't it? Talk about dead people. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The maintenance guy looked at me and said, are you sure? I'm like, I'm pretty sure. Amen. Pretty sure. <laughs> All righty. Amen. First John. Hallelujah. Let's see if I can get back to the Bible here. First John. I, I, uh, Sunday night I preached about uh, the uh, the first four verses of John. First John here. Um, we talked about this life revealed, and this life experienced, and this life shared. Um, talking about the fellowship, things like that, with the Father. And how he is, uh, uh, how the, the, the Lord wants us to have fellowship with him through his word. And the, 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 the Bible reveals things to us and we experience this life. It's not just a religion. It's not just something that we talk about. It's not just something that we say empty prayers to. Amen. It's, it's something that's real. Amen. It's something that's alive. Just like you have a relationship with your family member, your spouse, your children, uh, it's a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He's somebody that you talk to. He's somebody that you spend time with. And we forget about that a lot of times because, you know, we don't hear an audible voice. Amen. Uh, you know, we, we, we're in an age now where we like to hear responses quickly. Amen. We send a text message. We expect one to send, somebody to send one right back, right? We, we send an email, we expect one back. We call someone, we expect a phone call back. Or, or you know, or whatever the case may be, we, we, respect, we expect a response. Amen? And that's a lot of times why I believe that we forget about our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ is because we pray to Him. Amen. And all a lot of times our answers are not audible answers. It's not in black and white. It's not just uh, just uh, yeah, do this or you're praying. Maybe you're praying about a job or maybe you're praying about a certain situation and you ask the Lord for help and you ask the Lord for guidance and He's not going to just set you down and say, "Well, this is what you need to do." <coughs> it would be much easier. Amen. But the Bible tells us we walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. That's what we've been talking about in our Sunday school class and how the disciples would follow the Lord Jesus Christ and they saw him doing great works and miraculous things and even having the powers themselves to be able to do the things that he did and how it would be much uh, I don't want to say easy, preacher, because I'm sure it wasn't easy following the Lord because many of the disciples were even martyred themselves. But I do want to say that it would be it would be simpler to follow Him because we we would be able to see Him and see what He's doing. Just like John, the Bible says, <coughs> laid his head on 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 the Lord Jesus Christ on his bosom. Listen to his heartbeat. Was able to talk to him. Was able to get guidance from. Him, was able to ask him questions about certain things in their life and be able to get it an answer. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. How many times do you talk? How many times do you talk to your spouse? My wife hates this, y'all. 
she'll talk to me and she'll ask me a question, Brother Joe. And if I don't know the answer right away, I just won't say anything. Now I don't I, I just I, I don't see that I have to say thinking. <laughs> right? <laughs> but I guess some people require that response. <laughs> So now I tried to say, well, hold on a second, let me think about it. Because normally I just, she'll say it and then I'm just like, I'll just keep driving. She's like, I hate when you ignore me. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not, I'm not ignoring you. I'm just, I just don't know the answer just yet. Just hang on. Let me think. Listen, I don't think as fast as you do. Let me process. Sometimes it might take me two or three days to think about a simple question. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> she'll, be, she'll ask me a question about windows in her house or the paint or something. I'm like, what is it going to take to get, you know, and then wheels start turning. And then sometimes I veer off in my mind. And I'll be going this way and then I get back on track. And then finally I'll say a day or two later, yeah, I think that'll be all right. Amen. And I'm not, don't take this the wrong way. I'm not trying to liken myself to the Lord Jesus Christ. But, but it, sometimes it might take him some time to answer us. Amen. Yeah. Now, when we read our Bible, yes, there are answers on every page. You can, find, you can find answers on everything that we need in life, how to discipline our children, <coughs> how to handle our finances, what should we do about church, what should we do about our marriage, what should we do about, amen, Stu what should we do about studying, what should we do about wisdom, what should we do about understanding, what should we do, all of that's in here. Amen? Wouldn't you agree with me? The Bible has all... The, listen, and listen, even Old Testament. All of the Bible's not written directly to us, but all of the Bible is written for us. Amen? So we have the answers. All right, just because it's in... The, I can't stand some of these guys. They'll talk about, well, that's the Old Testament. What does that have to do with anything? You can't learn from the Old Testament? Amen. Look, they'll sit and study all these books of these men that have died, uh, all these philosophers, like, oh, well, that's, that's old news, man. But they'll spend their whole lives tra training and studying after these guys, and the first time you bring up the Old Testament, well, that's the Old Testament. All this is for us. We have the answers. But the problem is sometimes we... We we don't we, we forget that we forget that we're not living we have we have in betweens, right? In between the lines. What do we do in between the lines, right? We know we're supposed to tithe, but where what, you know, in between the lines, where do we do this? Or what about this one single situation that we're having? What about this argument that me and my wife had? What about this argument that me and my son had? <clears throat> what do we do about this situation? What do we do about my kids dating? What do we do about my kids having cell phones? What do we do about my kids driving? What do we do about this and that and jobs and all? It, we walk by faith and not by sight. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes <laughs> it feels like a coin toss. <laughs> well, I'll just flip a coin, see where it lands. But it's a relationship. And let me tell you something. The more you get to know him, y'all believe he's alive and real. Are y'all following me? I'm going somewhere with all this, I promise. It's a relationship. Amen. The more, Bo, hush and sit down, son. The more you get to know somebody, the more you learn about them sometimes I bet some of you folks in here that's been married 
20, 30 years, you can already, you know, your, you know before you even say anything what your wife or your husband's going to say. Sometimes you can, you, you don't even have to ask. I'm, I'm getting there. This is a good thing. You Look, you don't even have to ask, you already know. Right? When your wife walks into the room, you know how she's feeling. If she's, if she's having a good day, bad, something's bothering her. Same with your husband. You know if they're agitated, aggravated. Amen? That's, there, there's, no, y'all, there's nothing wrong with that. That's, that's great. That's proving my point. And the more that you build this relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, that fellowship with Him, you start to learn His ways. And you start to understand that His ways are not our ways. So that those times when you feel like, well, I, I, this, I want to do it this way, you might want to step back and think a second. I hope you are getting it like I am trying to get it across. So that's how you fill in the blanks there. You get closer to Him. It's that relationship. Me and my, my wife were talking that I had a best friend in Bible college named Jacob Williams. My wife, <laughs> it, it's, they just had a funny relationship, them two. But look, he and I could finish each other's sentences. We lived together. We worked together. Everywhere we went, we were just a team. All right? We went to meetings together. If I preached somewhere, I'd take him. If he preached, he'd take me. We, we were a, a team. Finish each other's sentences. We knew what was going on. I could hear, if I could hear in his voice that something was wrong, he could hear it in mine. Best friends. And that doesn't come but just by meeting somebody and acquaint, being an acquaintance with them and just shaking hands and seeing them on Sunday. How you doing? Amen. Are y'all following what I'm saying? So I'm still stuck on, on Sunday night's message here. I'm, I'm, I might get to, to the rest of it. But that fellowship is important. If you want to know the heart of God and the mind of Christ, we've got to be spending time with Him. Just as if He's your best friend. And He is. Because the Bible tells us He is. See, there's more to this than just Shaking hands, how you doing? Send a text message every now and then, praying for you, hope you're doing okay. You don't get to know somebody that way. When I asked my wife out on a date, I didn't just take her out on that first date and ask her to marry me. We didn't know each other. In that way, we didn't know each other, we didn't understand each other. It took time. It takes time to get to know someone, to get to understand them, get to know their thoughts, get to know their intentions, get to know their heart. I mean, so what we do as believers, as Christians, we walk into a church, we get saved, we give Christ our life, we become His bride. And how crazy is it that we don't spend time with Him? And we don't build that relationship with Him. We don't build that that one-on-one time with Him. We just, we, 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 it's insane. Preacher, when you agree to just marry someone and that and that's it, you just don't never talk to them, you don't never spend time with them, you don't never get to know them, you don't have that, listen, the Lord Jesus Christ, He, he longs to that fellowship time with you. He wants to have it. Amen. He wants to hear from you. He wants to know what you're feeling. Listen, He wants you to tell Him 
Lord, I'm sad. Lord, I'm having one of those days today. Lord, I, I just need to talk to you for a minute. How many of you ever just need to vent sometimes? Yeah. Try venting to him. Yeah. You call up, listen, we'll pick up that phone, we'll call somebody. God help us, we'll get on Facebook and write four pages worth of stuff about how we're venting for the day. But we, we can't take time to just sit and talk to the Lord about how we feel. Amen. He wants that relationship with us. We'll sit and tell everybody on our Facebook what we're having for lunch. We'll take a picture. Gas station pizza with a Diet Coke. One of those days. Amen. Yeah, look, I'm at, I'm at such and such. Click. We were eating out, we were, we were we were in Nashville, eating at this barbecue restaurant. I look over, they bring all this food to this table. I look over and there's like four or five teenage girls going like this, standing up, and they're going like this. I said, Kelly, what are they doing? She said, they're taking pictures, they're posting their food. Half of my plates on my shirt, every, Listen, I'm, I, I got barbecue sauce running down my arms, and I'm, they're over there taking pictures. It's a photo op. I got, I got barbecue sauce running down my chin. But Kelly's like, gosh, don't get in that picture. It was our five-year anniversary. It was, it was romantic. I forgot to share that. We had glass bottle cheer wines and barbecue in Nashville, Tennessee. Praise God. That's a perfect, perfect picture of our marriage right there. Amen. Yeah, we have glass bottle cheer wines. Amen. Some of y'all don't even know what a cheer wine is. Amen. But we'll, we'll share those things. We'll put everything, shoes. Here's, I just washed my truck. But we can't, we can't, we can't sit and spend time with the Lord. Yeah, that's the truth. That's the truth. You say, he don't want to know about my truck. Sure he does. Sure, he wants to know about your day. Amen. He wants to listen. I don't under. He wants to. He wants you to talk to him, spend time with him, share your heart with him. Sit and just sit down in a quiet room by yourself. Lord, I had one of them days today. I you know. Lord, you'll never believe what I saw in these apartments today. <laughs> He'll be like, Artie, trust me, I know. <laughs> Y'all get He wants to have a relationship. Let's look here at verse number five, and I'm gonna, I'll preach. I'll preach one point, and I'll stop. I've got like six. We'll, we'll try to get it done this month. Amen. Verse number five, we see this life exposed. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Period. At all. I like where, I like they put that at all in there. Just in case you was wondering. In him is no darkness at all. at all. There's not a place in him 
that we have to wonder about. There's not a spot about him. There's not anything about, listen to me, Jesus Christ, he is the light. Amen. In him is no darkness at all. Everything, his mind, his heart, his, listen, everything about him was exposed. Amen. There's nothing hidden about him. There's nothing you have to wonder about him. Listen, he, he was hung on a cross to die in front of the entire world. His, everything about him was revealed. There's nothing in him that we don't know about. I'm getting excited about it. Listen, we don't have to wonder, is he mad at me? He'll tell you when he's mad at you. You say, well, is he going to get mad at me? Yeah, you do what he tells you not to do. Just like any loving father would. He tells you when he's happy with you. Just like every loving father should. Amen. He tells you. In him is no darkness at all. We don't have to wonder. All we, we have this book. And he wants us to read this book. He wants us to spend time with him. He wants us to share our thoughts with him. But listen, let him spend some time with you. Just as I said, everything's in here. Everything. How we should handle certain situations. How we should handle other people. How we should handle sin. How we should handle sin in ourselves. How we should handle sin with other people. When you know someone else is doing wrong, it tells you. If you have an ought with somebody, if you're mad at your brother, if you're mad at your sister in Christ, if you have a problem with somebody, it tells you how to handle it. There's so many things, so many things. And I wish we could preach on all of them, but it's just everything. If you started on it, listen, you couldn't finish. There's not enough time to finish preaching verse 5. You could preach verse 5 for years. If you wanted to start on it, you could talk about how to handle all these different areas of life. Because it's that verse, it is the King James Bible. God is light and in Him is no darkness at all. Everything's exposed. You want to know something about Him? Ask Him. You want to know something about His life? You want to know something about what He does and what He's about? Right there it is. But where we fall short is in that verse 4, that, that fellowship. The reason, we get, the reason we can't get to verse 5 is because of verse 4. That's where we get hung up. Because we don't have that fellowship. And these things right we under you. Go back to verse 3. Right there, verse 3. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that ye also have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with, and with His Son, Jesus Christ. We can't, we're, not, we're not getting to verse 5 because of verse 3 because we don't have fellowship. We're not letting Him show us all the... We're not letting Him expose all His light to us because... We can't have, we're not having a total, full fellowship with Him. There's so many things about a relationship, and I'm not talking about just a relationship with your spouse, maybe with anybody, friend, your children. If I don't spend time with him, my son, he's going to grow up 
We're going to grow up. I'm not going to know anything about him. There's going to be things, secrets about him, things about him that he's not going to know or I'm not going to know. There's going to be things about he, me that he's not going to know. Something funny the other night, preacher, we, we stopped at QT on the way home from church because we have to stop 500 times on the way home. We never just make a straight trip. <clears throat> but I bought him a drink, a small, little bitty drink. <laughs> Why did I buy it? Because it's got an action figure head on the top of it. And he's got to have them all. But do I know him? Yeah, I know he's going to drink it in about 0.5 seconds. It's only about that big and it's gone. But I bought me a drink. I bought me a lemonade. I don't love lemonade, but he loves it. Because I know that when I get done with this, he's going to be hitting me up for what I'm drinking. Daddy, what what we got? And I thought about that. They're not bragging on me. I, that's, I don't gain anything from that. But what I thought about preacher was, I thought how neat it was that he his dad knows things about him. And I told my wife, I thought that was pretty neat because my dad. There's a lot of things about me, even simple little things that my dad don't even know about me. He's never met my daughter. She's six months old. He's never met her. Y'all see what I'm talking about? Fellowship. It's broken fellowship. He broke that fellowship with me when I was about three years old. See me every now and then. Call. How you doing? Tell the kids I said hello. What am I going to tell them? Tell them you said, hey, he don't even know who you are. Well, I'll tell them. <laughs> There's a broken fellowship. And listen to me. I'm done. We're guilty of this. With the Lord. Because let's be honest. How many of us, a lot of times, will come in here on Sunday, we'll get... You ever see a friend after a long time? You sit down, man, y'all have a good time. And then when y'all walk away, y'all y'all, y'all might not even talk to each other for six months. But it was good. The time y'all spent was good. So we'll come in here on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. Some of us, not even that much. Some of us, we're lucky, we're lucky to see some folks come back on Sunday night, Wednesday night. Some people don't even know what this place looks like after dark. And we're try, we try to get, we try to get, people try to get full on that. That's their, that's their extent of fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ right there. And then talk about, man, God's good. God sure is good. You don't even know the, the half of it. Amen. Let me tell you really about God. Let me tell you about God on Sunday morning. Let me tell you about the Lord Jesus Christ on on, on Tuesday night, how good he is. (laughs) When you're tired, you're wore out. You're tired of the week. You're tired of dealing with things. Let me tell you about, hold on. Let me tell you about how good God is when when, when payday comes and you got to pay all them bills and you don't think you're going to make it. And then all of a sudden, let me tell you how good God is on those days. Amen. Amen. Sunday's just that cherry on top. And them sweet times. Let me tell you something. Them sweet times is when you feel like you're not going to make it. 
and you crawl up in his lap and you let him hold you and you tell him how you feel and you tell him your doubts and you tell him your frustrations you tell him you're scared tell him I don't know what's wrong doctors can't figure it out I don't know why I'm sick Lord I don't know why I keep getting these sick feelings Lord I don't know what they're going to do with my brother Lord it's a mess I don't know what I don't know what we're going to do I, I hadn't I hadn't got a job in, in a few months, Lord. I don't know what we're going to do. Our house just burned down, Lord. I don't know what we're going to do. Can't figure it out. Lord, I'm about to graduate. I don't know what to do. Lord, I'm about to, I'm about to spend... I'm about to marry someone, Lord. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, Lord. But Mike, that's when it's good to me. That's when it's sweet. When your son, listen to me. When he can just sit over there and sing, I can trust Jesus. But let me tell you what's even better than that. When he sings it at home. When he's outside in the yard playing, I can hear him singing it. When he's playing in the sandbox, singing, I can trust Jesus. When it gets dark and it gets confusing and it gets scary, and you're looking around you, you're thinking I don't know if we're going to make it and you can just walk up to him and say Lord it's me again and you don't feel you don't feel bad because you ain't talked to him in a while but it's just like you're talking to that best friend again that's that fellowship that's when it's sweet that's when it's good amen that's when he starts to show verse number 5 to you. In him is no darkness at all. I want us to get it, church. I want us to understand it. It's not hard. It's not complicated. We complicate it. We're going through that victorious Christian life study downstairs in our Sunday school class <clears throat> and in that one study there's an equation the word of God plus faith equals victory and I was talking about that I was, thinking, I was thinking man I wish it was just that easy sometimes and it is but the thing about it is as we're as Christians we add all these fractions division multiplication we add all these letters all these numbers, all these other things to the equation, and by the time it's over with, God's got this long problem to deal with. When really it's just His Word, walking by faith, to get victory. But we muddy the waters up. Lord, I deal with this first. And deal, Lord, can you let's just walk by faith, study His Word, walk with Him. Spend time with him. Build that relationship. Amen. Let's all stand.